Hey, today we're in the Summit Racing Project garage with the rugged Roman Gladiator Jeep Project truck. Over the course of several episodes, the Summit Racing Tech team transformed this already versatile Jeep into a do-it-all adventure and overlanding rig, capable of bringing both you and your gear wherever your adventures take you. And when it came time to install a reliable communication system into this Jeep, Summit Racing called the mobile radio experts at DX Engineering. From there, the DX Engineering team compiled a list of both ham and GMRS radios, along with all the antennas, mounts, and other helpful communications accessories required to finish the job. Over the next few minutes, we'll walk you through the installation and you can take a closer look at some handy radio install tips and techniques that'll ensure your mobile radio station offers uncompromised performance and reliability. The first part of the installation involved mounting the radio transceiver modules behind the rear seats. The ICOM and Yesu radios we chose each use a detachable control head. Those will go up front by the driver, but mounting the actual radio transceivers remotely behind the seats here allows them to be protected from incidental contact, while also allowing them to better dissipate heat, as opposed to being installed, say, under a seat or tucked into a dashboard. That also means that we've got to run power from the Jeep's battery under the passenger compartment to these radios. So to get our power cables back there, we drilled a few holes and ran the cable up against the body, away from the dangers of snags and impacts from the trail. Now, whenever you drill through metal like this, it's important to apply a small amount of paint to the hole you just drilled. That's to cover the raw metal that you just exposed underneath the paint. This helps prevent rust from forming on that freshly exposed metal surface. And you'll always want to fit a rubber grommet into these holes, as the sharp metal edges can abrade and shear the cables you're feeding through. The added benefit of mounting our radio main units behind the seats is that we have more room for better cable management, so we're able to keep our power and coax runs clean and tidy. That's particularly important if you're installing more than one radio, which is exactly what we're doing with this Jeep Gladiator. The power cables and coax are all cut to length, then properly crimped and shielded with heat shrink sleeves. Now don't be tempted to use a cigarette lighter or a hairdryer here. Only a purpose-made heat gun tool will get hot enough to properly shrink the tubing without the dangers of an open flame. To power each radio, we ran lines directly from the battery to these distribution blocks from Summit Racing. Instead of tying into an existing 12-volt power source in the vehicle wiring harness, pulling power directly from the battery helps avoid potential electrical noise from things like the vehicle's fuel injectors and ignition system. With the radio transceivers mounted firmly to the rear seat panel and the wiring in place, we're able to pull the cables for the remote radio head units that'll go up front. But before we do that, it's time to install our antennas. Since the antennas will be mounted to the rear rack over the truck bed, our pal Justin from Summit Racing added supplemental ground points to ensure each antenna was properly grounded to the Jeep. A lot of vehicle bodies and roof racks are mounted on rubber grommets and pads, which helps reduce vibration and noise, but limits the electrical grounding capability. This is a critical step because most mobile radio antennas demand a good ground plane for optimal performance. With good ground points, we're ready to install the antennas. Starting with the base of our Yesu Auto Active Tuning Antenna, which offers good HF coverage and is a perfect complement to the Yesu FT891 in the cab. This antenna features motorized automatic tuning for whatever band we're operating on. And the best news is, it receives the power, tuning, and control information via the antenna coax, so there's no need for a fancy antenna mount or any extra wires or cables here. Next up is our VHF-UHF Comet antenna, which goes up near the cab. This is the one we're using for the ICOM 5100. Sure, the Yesu antenna offered VHF and UHF coverage too, but keeping separate antennas means that we can run both radios and monitor several bands simultaneously. Simple and compact, this Comet antenna is plenty durable for off-roading and is a clever folding base that allows us to easily lower the antenna if we're traversing a narrow trail with a thick canopy overhead, or if we're pulling into a car wash or have a low-entry garage. We're also installing a GMRS antenna for a third rugged radio that'll be mounted directly up front by the driver as well. This antenna is part of the kit Rugged Radio sells precisely for this Jeep model and comes with a handy angle bracket tailor-made for underhood mounting. Many off-road parks and expeditions require GMRS radios now, so adding GMRS capability is a smart forward-thinking move. Note that even with the additional trail armor this Jeep is equipped with on the cowl and A-pillar, installing this compact antenna mount was still a very easy job. 
Speaking of our GMRS radio, here it is. It's a rugged radio model GMR25, and it comes in a specially bundled kit with an antenna and mounting system specifically tailored for this Jeep Gladiator model. The radio itself is pretty compact, making it easy to snug up against the console in the passenger side footwell of the Jeep. And you'll see that we've also mounted the head units for both our ICOM and Yaesu radios onto a clever track mount from RAM mounts. The track goes in first, up near the windshield, and there's plenty of room along the track to put the mounts for both radios together. And you've got plenty of articulation and flexibility from the ball and socket joint to position the displays exactly where you need them. Another big benefit of this track mount system is that the individual mounts are pretty easily removable for excellent customization options, now or later on. It's worth pointing out that we did have to modify the Yesu mount slightly to give us a bit longer reach. We also installed a pair of DX Engineering standalone communication speakers under the dash as well to get improved audio output. This allows us to easily hear vital communications even with the engine running and the windows down. We also drilled a few dozen tiny holes to perforate the panel so we could hear our speakers better. We zip tie the wiring and bolt the panel up to hide the wires and speakers. Both speakers snug nicely up under the driver's footwell, where they'll be up out of the way and protected. Ignore that extra button you see on the panel. It's for an ancillary Jeep system that the Summit Racing folks had installed earlier. We've put the hand microphone for our HF radio on the passenger side right next to the GMRS radio and mic. The microphone for the VHF UHF radio went on the driver's side, slightly closer to our reach, simply because we figured that'll get the most day-to-day -day use while the vehicle is in motion. Now it's worth pointing out that with the large passenger compartment inside the Jeep, we had to use some handy extension cables from consolidated wire so that the transceivers in the back had enough length to reach the head units on the dash. And while most of the wires and cables were tucked under the carpet and behind interior trim panels, we made sure to keep critical connection points accessible in case we need to service or replace the radios in the future without tearing the whole truck apart again. All told, this install is super clean and will easily stand up to the rigorous trail and off-road use this Jeep will encounter on its adventures. And there you have it. The Roman Gladiator is now ready to head off the grid with a reliable mobile communication system that'll keep you connected with the rest of the world. We'll toss several links in the description so you can get all the details on the entire Jeep Gladiator project series, along with some specifics on the radio and communications gear we used in this video too. And if you don't want to miss any future videos from DX Engineering, make sure to subscribe to the DX Engineering YouTube channel and click the notification bell. We're always posting new product reviews, tech shorts, celebrity interviews, and other fun and important ham radio stuff on this channel too.